Welcome to the shooting show. This week, Byron tests out the ATN X site and the local rat and rabbit populations, and we bring you all the news from the shooting world. In the UK, ATN are very much the new kid on the block, but they are part of a new generation of night vision technology. This ATN X site is all the talk at the moment. This particular one comes from Scott Country, who have kindly lent it to me uh, for a couple of weeks of testing. And it delivers something that hasn't been available before. It allows you the capability to have a rifle on your scope without doing anything else to it apart from the push of a button which can transform from day to night. And as well as that, harnessing the available technology that we see in all manner of devices that we use on a daily basis from our phones to our computers, it has a number of really cool uh, aspects of it that if you're into that sort of thing, they're really nice additions to have like GPS positioning, wi fi to your iPhone or your iPad, onboard recording. It really packs a lot of stuff into a very compact unit. You know, this is a lot smaller than a Pulsar uh, N750, for example, that has been around for quite a, few, a while now. It, it is fairly heavy, though. Uh, it, it probably weighs about the same, if not a little bit more, but it's, it is a lot more compact. And today, uh, obviously, I've got some uh, IR with it. I've got a, a Nightmaster 800 here because as anybody uh, who has used digital night vision will know, the quality of your IR light can make a massive difference. So we've spared nothing here. I'm using a Nightmaster 800. It's pretty much the golden standard and the, the benchmark by which all others are based. I have already had this unit out quite a lot. The first thing to say about these units is make sure that they've got the latest firmware update on them. Uh, they're continually upgrading and improving and ironing out any bugs. Uh, admittedly, these did have quite a lot of problems in the early days. It wasn't anything that was wrong with the unit itself, but more the software that was on it. Pretty much everything's been sorted now. Uh, when I got this, I was having a couple of small issues, but they very, very quickly got on it. Uh, Paul at Scott Country was uh, incredibly helpful and they soon uh, created a new firmware update, which I downloaded on here, which is a very simple process with the micro SD card on the side. You simply download it, insert it, and follow the instructions on screen, and it fixed the issues. I had it out a couple of nights ago on an air rifle shooting rats, and as you'll be able to see from the footage, tremendous fun. <laughs> It's some of the most fun I've had in a long time uh, from the comfort of a vehicle. We were positioned on the front of my Land Rover about 25 yards to 30 yards away, uh, maybe even 35 actually for some of the rats at the back of the barn. And we were rolling them over left, right and centre. And it gives you an idea of the clarity of the images from what you can see uh, of what uh, the, the rats that we were shooting. We shot them both green and white light Depends what your preference is. Personally, I prefer looking at it in white light. I think you just get a slightly clearer image. But as with any of these digital night visions, it's very important to take the time to tweak the uh, brightness of your settings and the contrast, and also make sure that you've got everything focused front and back to, 
to enhance the crispness of your image. And it's worth spending that time just to make sure everything is spot on. Tonight, I'm gonna to take the unit out after rabbits as part of the rabbit control that we have in this uh, particular area. But it, what it will do uh, with the on-screen footage is show you what you can see at certain ranges, uh, 100, 200, 300 meters, and just how, how clear it is with it zoomed back, zoomed in, so that you can appreciate exactly what you would be able to see. In terms of operation of the unit, it's very simple. Single button at the front here, press it down, turns the unit on. If you want to turn the unit off, you hold this down, it counts down, three, two, one on the screen, you let go, the unit powers off. Almost all the settings inside can be accessed via the menu button, uh, but they can also, if you have the Wi-Fi on and you uh, download the app, which is specific to this unit, almost everything can be controlled from the app and you can see that as I run through it. The batteries are inserted in the side via this cap just here, and the various different ports and micro SD can be uh, taken out and, and replaced via this cap on the side here, which might just need a coin or a screwdriver to undo if it's been done up tight. It's very easy to use, focus in the usual places, Front focus here, that gives you crispness of your image, and uh, you'll bring your reticle into crisp focus with uh, your rear focus here. Zoom is achieved via these two buttons here. The only thing that does happen on the odd occasion is you end up pressing the power button, but fortunately, because it counts down, like I said, it doesn't switch it off with a single press. So if you have, you'll soon know, and you can slide your finger back. Single press of this button records a video onto your micro SD and the single press of that uh, button on the left hand side will take a photograph for you. So very, very easy to use. I think the video footage that uh, we've put up on screen for you to have a look says more than I can explain. Uh, you can get a very good idea of how well the unit works by what you can visually see. And in terms of the menu settings, they're fairly straightforward. Zeroing is very similar to a lot of these digital units. I didn't have any issue with that at all. You've got your standard one shot zero that most of these units offer. And although I've shown you on the app how to adjust things and what can be adjusted, it can all be done on the unit itself. It's just that I can't show you that with the, the video output, which is why we've done it with the, the, the app being videoed instead. There are a lot of people who love these units. Mike Powell, Sporting Rifle Magazine is one of them. I know he's got a friend who's ended up buying two of them. So they really do have a lot of supporters and they've somewhat taken the market by storm. So that definitely has to be noted. There's a lot of people out there with them now and they've not been around for a very long time. So I think that speaks quite highly of the unit. From my own point of view, for the price point, it's hard to believe that this amount of technology can be offered for only a bit more than 600 pounds. Uh, think of where we were only a few years ago and it would have been impossible to even conceive that. As a night vision unit, yeah, for 600 quid it is right up there and it's right up there with units that cost considerably more. As a day unit, yeah, it works just fine. I think those people who are used to using really good expensive glass you know, like a Swarovski, for example, will struggle to come to terms with using this as a day scope. Um, but you've got to put yourself in a different mindset. It is also a night vision scope. You're looking essentially through a computer screen and, uh, screen and your zoom is digital. So, you know, if you compare it to a nice, nice piece of glass, it's not that great. But if you think of it as it's intended with its dual capabilities, it's all right. Uh, and there is plenty of footage of people um, shooting birds and rabbits out at fairly, uh, fairly impressive ranges with these units. So it clearly does work. If you haven't seen these, you've got to check them out. If you're really tempted by what you see, give Scott Country a shout. Uh, they will send these out on test. And from the people that I've spoken to them who have had a chance to test them, 
the vast majority end up buying them. Uh, it is quite an impressive piece of kit and I think we're going to see a lot more of ATN because this isn't the only thing that they make. Byron putting all the latest technology to very good use there. And now, it's the Shoot and Show News. This is the Shoot and Show News, brought to you by Gunplan. season is just two days away and to celebrate the Glorious 12th, Basque has publicised the Glorious 12th benefits of grouse shooting. Did you know that heather moorland is rarer than rainforest and three quarters of it is found in Britain? 90% of English grouse moors are within a national park or area of outstanding natural beauty. And grouse shooting across Great Britain supports two and a half thousand jobs. Download the other nine facts from basque.org.uk. Northern Ireland has agreed a new system for firearms licence fees. A figure of £98 has been agreed between Basque, the Department of Justice and the police. A variation will cost £30, far less than the £89 originally proposed by politicians. There will also be a banded system that allows a certificate holder to exchange any rifle for another, provided it's in the same band. More details are set to emerge towards the end of the year. Tim Bonner is the Countryside Alliance's new Chief Executive. He's worked at the Alliance for years as its Director of Campaigns and will step up to the top spot in September when Barney White Spunner stands down as Executive Chairman. Tim said the appointment was a huge honour, but also a huge responsibility and that the Alliance would change to face new challenges under his leadership. If the CLA Game Fair at Harewood House has whetted your appetite for Yorkshire-based events, you're in luck. The Northern Shooting Show is set to make its first appearance next year at the Yorkshire Event Centre in Harrogate on the 7th and 8th of May. It'll be an indoor show supplemented by a wide range of outdoor activities and demonstrations and will cover all varieties of shooting. Head to the address on screen to find out more. And finally, it's exactly one year until the 2016 Olympics and several British athletes have already booked their place in the shooting events. Ed Ling, Amber Hill and Elena Allen have all won quota places in shotgun shooting, while Jen McIntosh scored a quota in three-position rifle. Quota places are won for a country, not for an athlete, but winning the quota makes you the odds-on favourite to be selected. Once again, shooting will be the first sport to hand out a gold medal at the Games. That was the Shooting Show News. Well, that's all we've got time for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you're not a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you. Mm -hmm.